and welcome to Circle M Farm in Blanchardville, Wisconsin. I'm here at this diversified farm and bed and breakfast to find out more about what it takes to run a business like this. I'm helping Chris out with a few farm chores and then I'm gonna head up to Landmark Creamery for some amazing sheep's milk and cow's milk cheeses and learn from the girls up there how they do things. And then I'll head back here and Chris and I will make up a farm fresh breakfast for the guests. Gather with us around the farm table. I'm your host, Inga Witcher. Gather with us around a few years ago, I moved up to Wisconsin. I started an organic dairy farm at St. Isidore's Mead. That's when I discovered the abundance of Midwestern local food and small scale farmers, growing everything from green zebra tomatoes to pasture pork. I'm taking a break from the cows, hitting the road, and seeing if I can't satisfy my epicurious appetite. Oh. That's great. This is amazing. Funding for Around the Farm Table is provided in part by Wisconsin Farmers Union, a member-driven organization for family farmers, rural communities, and all people. Wisconsin Farmers Union, united to grow family agriculture. Information at wisconsinfarmersunion.com. With additional support from these community members and friends of Wisconsin Public Television. Nice job on those furrows. Thank you. It's Thanks. harder than you think it would be. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. I'm famous for my imperfect furrows. <laughs> Chris, thank you so much for letting me come down here and have this opportunity. What a great way to learn if this is the, the right business for me by being here with you. Uh, so tell me a little bit more about your business and about the B&B and everything. I don't talk without working, so I'm going to put you to work to <laughs> answer your question. We came here about 10 years ago from Chicago. We uh, loved living in the city, but my husband wanted to try a country adventure with our four children. So I was homeschooling. I brought them out here, and uh, they quickly learned how to do a lot of things. So we got horses, we got sheep, we got goats, and we started a CSA. And then as they all started leaving for college, I shrunk the CSA and I opened a bed and breakfast in their bedrooms. Nice. So <laughs> what gave you the idea to do a bed and breakfast here? Well, I really like being here and I really like sharing the farm. That's why we had a CSA in the first place. Okay. So for me, it was a natural progression. I had rooms empty. It's a cute house and I like eating with people. So it gives me a chance to cook, eat, talk and hopefully get a little weeding done. Right. See, that's, that's one thing that I'm trying to do on my farm. I, I really need to add some other value to the farm. And I really like uh, entertaining and I like farming. So I thought that maybe a B&B &B like this would be a good, good start for me to be able to do both of those things. I think it'd be perfect for you. How do you manage all the stuff that you're doing? It must be exhausting. There's coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and there's good food at the end of it. And I have a lot of good help. I'm here to help, so what else can I do today? Well, I need to get those goats milked. And I think you can do that. I'm good at me. that. I'm good at milking. All right, thanks. <laughs> I'll finish up here. Well, goat milking is a little bit different than cow milking. I'm used to working with four quarters instead of two. There's a couple differences between goat milk and cow's milk. It's naturally homogenized. So if you were to set out some goat's milk on the counter, it doesn't separate, the fat doesn't separate out from the milk like a cow's milk would. It also has less lactose. So if you find sometimes lactose might bother you, maybe try looking for a goat milk cheese or goat milk and see if that's maybe a little bit easier on you. It also has more calcium the cow's milk and the flavor is just a little bit stronger so it might take a little bit of getting used to but I think once you do you're gonna really like it. Good job, girl. Wisconsin's famous for its dairy cows but it's actually the number one state for dairy goats here in the United States. It's kind of an amazing fact that we don't think about all the time. Now that I've got this goat milk I'm gonna take it into Chris and find out what else she has in store for me today. Alrighty I got the goat milk. Thank you. What's next? Will you put Moki away and then we'll go get some veggies? Okay. Thank you. Come on, baby. <laughs> so Chris, this is just calendula, is that right? Yeah, calendula. Calendula, oh. And it's a resinous, you can feel it's kind of sticky. Yeah. 
It's very medicinal and good for you, but we're using it for confetti to make our breakfast look super pretty. Okay, so how do you do that? Well, we're picking the whole blossoms, mm -hmm. and then we will be picking off the petals. Okay. So literally just hold the end and pick and make something pretty. And these are edible flowers, so that's why we can eat these. Yep. What are the other flowers that you use? I love Johnny Jump Ups, violas. Okay. Pansies are terrific, but my 100% favorite is nasturtiums. Oh, yeah. And do you have to cut those up, or you just use the smaller leaves on those? I use the tiny little round leaves. They look like lily pads. And then I use the blossoms uh, whole. And you can stuff them with goat cheese or a little cream cheese, a little what ricotta. A great idea. And uh, they taste the same as the leaves. They're very peppery. Okay. Kind of like a radish. Right. right. Flavor, wonderful. So much of eating has to do with looking at something and, and sort of taking in the whole experience. So right. I love this idea of garnishing with a, a flour confetti. I'm probably going to start using this quite a bit in my cooking. Yeah, do it. Once you open your mind to it, there's a ton of flowers out there that you can use, and I just keep my eyes open. Okay. Um, my favorite new one this year is corn flour. They're uh, growing Those them, hybridizing blue. them mm -hmm. in lots of different colors, pink, purple, almost a black. Oh, nice. And a light blue. Okay. So blue is kind of rare in flowers, and it's pretty special to put, wonderful if you have a white iced cake, to put the whole confetti blue, pink, purple, and orange. Stunning. This is like the tip of the day for me. This is great. Thank you. <laughs> Well, Chris, if you don't mind harvesting the rest of the vegetables, I think I'll take off and get cleaned up and, and head off to get the cheese for the breakfast today. All right, say hi to the Annas for me. I will. Creamery in Plain, Wisconsin, which is also home to Landmark Creamery, where Anna and Anna make the, a fantastic variety of cheeses. And I thought since I was sent over here to pick up some cheese, instead of just grabbing it and going, I thought what I would do is learn the process of how these amazing, tasty cheeses are made. So let's get started. Sounds good. We're just adding the starter cultures right now. And what does the starter culture do? The starter culture uh, adds flavor, but it also uh, acidifies the milk so that once we add the rennet a little bit later on, um, the curd of the cheese forms. Okay. So you need the acidity, otherwise the milk would just stay liquid. Okay. And the milk that you have in here right now, it's a cow and sheep milk. Yes, it is. Yep. It's about uh, two thirds cow, one third sheep today. Okay. Why do you like the two different types of milk? I, I love the nuttiness and the higher fat and protein that the sheep milk brings. And that's why we make most of our cheeses are just 100% sheep milk. I think the blends work really well together because it just kind of brings out the best in both of the milks. Sure, yeah. So, and they play really nicely off of each other. Oh, good. So. Well, don't let me keep you. I'm, I'll wait here and wait for your order. <laughs> okay. All right, well, now that we've added the starter culture, we're just going to let it ripen for about 30 minutes. Oh. And that just allows... Um, the bacteria and the cultures to um, uh, start working on the milk and uh, getting things going. So in the meantime, we could uh, also add the starter culture to our Petit Nuage milk, which is over in our coagulation vat. Okay. So this is the vat that we use to make Petit Nuage, our little buttons of fresh cheese. Mm -hmm. This is 100% sheep milk. Um, we call this little contraption a coagulation vat. It's amazing to me that this is not having to be heated up or anything like that. It's, I feel like it's something I could do at home. Yes, it is. And actually, this is one of the most common cheeses that people make um, at home. It's just it's considered a lactic set cheese. Mm -hmm. So it really just, um, you add your culture, and it just sits for a long time. It's a very easy cheese. A lot of people will drain this in their um, like a a cheesecloth. Oh, yeah. OK. Yeah, you could do cheesecloth. We, we, drain ours in little baskets, but that works. Uh -huh. Part of what's appealing to me about eating is just seeing how beautiful the food is. Yes. And, and your cheeses always yes. look so gorgeous. And yes, thank you. Edible. I have a, a friend, uh, Jeannie Carpenter, who is a cheesemonger for a while at Metcalf's and has been really instrumental in furthering the uh, artisan cheese movement in Wisconsin, she was talking about how in France you see all of these beautiful tiny little cheeses all over in all the different stores, but nothing like that existed here in Wisconsin, and that really kind of inspired me to develop one. Uh huh. 
All right, here's the ladle that we use to stir the cultures in. Okay. You just, um, yep, just put the spoon in there and just stir very slowly and gently. Um, what we're doing is trying to get the cultures to rehydrate a little bit first. Okay. And then over the next hour, we'll continue to stir and stir and stir until it's all incorporated. Hmm. What is it about sheep's milk that you like? I love the nutty flavors in sheep milks. Um, and I, I, one of the other things too that I feel really strongly about is the sustainability of sheep dairies and um, the fact that the sheep are light on the land, they don't need as many acres as you would need for cows. Um, they just, uh, I think they're a really good venture to uh, sustain families. Mm -hmm. And um, I've always would thought, love to yeah. see more sheep dairies in Wisconsin. I always thought about getting sheep because mm -hmm. I only have uh, 30 acres on my farm, yeah. so it's, it kind of would make more sense for me to have yeah. sheep than cows, but I just love cows too yeah. much. <laughs> <laughs> so what got you into cheese making? I started just tinkering in my kitchen, actually. Um, my husband and I bought a small family, small um, hobby farm, basically, and um, uh, we we bought a couple sheep to start with, although not a dairy breed, and um, I bought a family milk cow. Um, oh, what we, breed? She was um, Ayrshire. Oh, I love Ayrshire. Yeah, I needed to start making cheese to just kind of keep up with all of that milk. So really just, yeah, tinkering in my kitchen it became a passion, and I had also been kind of looking for a small business venture that I could start on my own, and... I uh, just felt like cheese making was uh, something that mm -hmm. would both keep me inspired and a way to kind of participate mm -hmm. in the egg community in the state. I wonder if the texture of the cow's milk would be different. Be, like it feels like the sheep's milk is always a little bit more dry or chalkier or something. Cow's milk might be a little smoother um, just because it has different sized fat globules. Mm, um, right. And like sheep milk is always just a little bit um, drier than a, a goat milk, for yeah. instance. Um, there's some differences there with a chev. Um, and, but your yield would be lower with uh, cow's milk because it has less fat and less um, protein in it. Mm. Um, and it will be slightly lower fat because of that reason, too. This is like the most meditative thing a person <laughs> could be doing. I just, I feel so zen. <laughs> I find the whole cheese making process to be my zen. All right. We're good to go here for a little while? Yes. Okay. We'll let this uh, just continue to dissolve and we can go add the rennet in the other vat. Great. So what does the rennet do? It's cleaving um, certain uh, proteins off of the cells and that allows the curd to kind of coagulate um, and stick together. So you can turn it off now. I get these, these washed off. How long are you going to let the curd set up for? This is a 45 minute set. Oh, great. Okay. So yeah, we'll let it go for 45 minutes and then it should be ready to go. All right, I'll wash this. is a lot of hurry up and wait, but it's also a lot of washing and sanitizing equipment. When you're making cheese or working with any dairy products, you want to make sure that everything is as clean as possible. So the first thing I did is just spray these off, get any of the solids of cheese off of here. And now I'm going to give it a good scrub with a nice soapy solution, and then I'll go ahead and sanitize it. Inga, if you're ready, we, the curd is all set. OK, I got it. So we're just going to cut like yep, normal. Yep, we're going to cut down lengthwise, then we'll change paddles, and we'll walk back the other direction. OK. All right. I run my hands through the vat to check the strength of the curd and whether or not it's ready to start stirring. If all of the, uh, the little cubes stay intact, then I know that it's firm enough to, uh, to start stirring. So just take a form and just scoop in what you can of the curd. 
and then just spill the rest. And if there's big chunks like this, you can leave them intact. Okay. It doesn't have to be broken up. Well, we're gonna finish up here, and then why don't you meet us all outside and we'll taste some of these amazing cheeses. So I'm excited to taste some of these cheeses. Now this is a very fresh cheese right here. Uh, pronounce it for me again because I'm terrible at pronunciation. This is Petit Nuage, Petit which nuage. means little cloud in French. Oh, beautiful. So this is a fresh sheet milk cheese that we make every week. Mm -hmm. It's creamy, it's rich, and it pairs beautifully with lots of different things. It's a wonderful summer cheese, mm -hmm. great with salads, honey, berries. I think this might go really well with the beets that I'm, I was planning on cooking. It's mm -hmm. perfect with beets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about the other flavors? The Anabasque is uh, based on a style of cheese called Oso Arati. Mm -hmm. It is quite nutty um, and it has a nice smooth texture and you'll definitely get a taste of the saltiness mm -hmm. of the cheese in there. Um, and, it, and you'll also get some of the cave aged um, flavors from it, from the rind development. It's a wash rind cheese, so it's washed two, um, about two times a week. Well, I think the Annabeth sounds like it'd be really nice in the frittata I'm going to be making, mm -hmm. so. The last one is Pippet, and that was kind of an experiment. When we first made it, um, it didn't taste like much of anything, and we set it aside, and a few months later we came back to it, and it had a really interesting bite at the end. So it has a really interesting finish, and it's a creamy, soft cheese. It's beautiful with sandwiches, crackers, and iced table cheese. Oh, good. All right. Well, that sounds like it could be perfect for the cheese plate. So, all right, ladies. Well, thank you so much, and I think we got to get back to Circle M farm. So have a great day. Thank you. Alrighty, Chris. Well, I'm back. I brought some great cheeses back for us. Awesome. What's next on the list? Well, we're just going to get these quilts off the line and go make the beds. All right. Oh, sorry. <laughs> It is. <laughs> so Chris, I'm really interested in doing a farm stay at my house. Tell me what exactly is a farm stay and, and what, what, do, what do I expect as an innkeeper doing it? I think there's a great need for people to bring, pe bring people out to the farm. Mm -hmm. um, people from cities want to come, they want to get their kids close to animals, and I'm booked all the time. Really? We just got inspected as a certified B&B in April and we're already booked through September. That's fantastic. Yeah, so it, it'll go fast once you put your name out there. Uh -huh. um, it's not without work. Okay. Uh, there's laundry, there's cooking, there's thinking through things, there's keeping your house tidier than you probably <laughs> would for yourself and keeping your lawn mowed and your <laughs> weed whacking kept up on. So. Yeah, that, there's some work, but it's really fun, and you get to meet a lot of really appreciative, wonderful people. It must be amazing to be able to see the, the people coming out who, I, I think we take it for granted every day that we live on farms and we right. can collect eggs or see pigs or, or know all these different things. Is it fun to witness the farm through the eyes of the guests that come out? Oh yeah, we, we had guests from Chicago this week, and the mom and I were talking about how their toddler is helping us see things totally differently than we see it. She just loves the kittens, she loves the bugs. She loves every dead thing she finds. <laughs> and uh, yeah, having guests here makes me fall in love with this place even more than I already am. That's so nice. Yeah. Now, what can people expect from a stay when they come hmm. to, a, to, the, to the farm? You can tag along with us on chores in the morning. You can milk with us if you're around when we do the goats. You can collect eggs. You can help us chop food in that, the morning. That's so to. fun. It's What a great experience. It's so different than staying at a hotel or something. I mean, yes. you really get that one-on-one -on -one experience with the people and you're invited into the family. On the other hand, when the roosters crow at four. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to share the farm experience with so many people mm -hmm. because it just helps also people reconnect with where their food's coming from and just have that experience that we get to have every day. Right. That most days we usually love it, right? It is just uh, my greatest delight when my guests are here for breakfast and then I can send them into my tiny town and have lunch and dinner and drive the economy here too. So I think that's another part of farm, stay, bed and breakfast that people don't think about is that these rural economies need an influx of, mm, absolutely. of, um, of money, of support, of attention. Mm -hmm. And we have so much to offer and people don't know. Well, Chris, thanks for giving me this experience. I think it's something that I definitely gonna try at my own house. 
Well, why don't we let Chris finish up with her morning chores and we'll go down and start getting a frittata on the table for the guests. Frittatas are a wonderful recipe to make, especially if you're living on a farm and you have the abundance of beautiful local ingredients like Swiss chard and zucchini and fresh eggs and artisan cheese. I think it's a great way to get all your vegetables in before lunch and it's a great way to use up the vegetables from your garden or your CSA box. Leftovers go great in a frittata as well. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my eggs ready. I'm just gonna do a simple six egg frittata and we'll just crack the eggs right in the bowl here. So I'd lightly beat your eggs just to get everything nice broken up here. Just put a little salt and pepper in the eggs to season them there. We'll set those eggs aside and then I'm gonna start cooking my vegetables. I have one onion chopped here and then also the stalks of the Swiss chard that I'll cook those together. They're gonna to cook at roughly the same time and then I'll start preparing the rest of the ingredients. So just add a few tablespoons of butter to a cast iron skillet, get that melted down. Then throw in your onions and your Swiss chard tips. That's the stalks of the Swiss chard. I'm gonna let this sit and cook for a little bit and then I'll get my zucchinis ready. Take them over there. Cook down the Swiss chard and the zucchini until they're tender. Now that the vegetables are cooked, just take them off and place them in a pan because we're gonna cook the eggs right back in this cast iron skillet. All right, let's go cook the eggs. Add a little bit more butter to the pan. Add your eggs and then let them sit undisturbed for about 30 seconds so they can kind of set up on the bottom. The eggs are set up nicely. Now I can take it back over and put my vegetables in. Now's the fun part is when you get to decorate the eggs with all of your cooked vegetables. And you want to do this artfully so it looks good for your guests. So just gently place all the cooked vegetables back in the egg mixture. Ooh, they're still very hot. I might use this so I don't burn my hands. Make sure to get them nice and dispersed all around. And then you can kind of, with the back of your spoon, set the vegetables in the egg mixture a little bit. Now I'm gonna take these beautiful cherry tomatoes and just sprinkle them right around on this frittata. Oh, it looks so festive and pretty. That's why I like using frittatas for entertaining. It looks like they're so beautiful that it took so much time, but they're really they're quite easy to do. After the tomatoes, I'm gonna add the cheese, and I'm gonna add a few of the cheeses that I picked up from Anna and Anna. I think these are gonna be delicious. And these go just right on top. I think that the Petit Nuage and the Anabasque are just gonna bring out a whole new dimension to this frittata and make it quite a bit local. And then to finish it with, I'm just gonna put a little bit of the hard sheep smoked cheese on top. And when it comes out of the oven and just before I serve it, I'm gonna just take some of this beautiful basil and rip it right on top. here for you guys and some Ooh, roasted nice. potatoes. A hearty breakfast to fuel you up for traveling the back roads of Wisconsin. This farm fresh frittata is chock full of veggies and local sheep's cheese straight from the creamery. Pan roasted new potatoes pairs well with the frittata. Spinach salad with a light vinaigrette and topped with roasted beets. Dessert for breakfast? Little chocolate zucchini cakes, just picked raspberries, and a sprinkling of flower petal confetti. Guests at the B&B quickly turn into friends. I'm feeling inspired to open my own farm stay in Osseo, and I hope that you'll feel inspired to stay at one of the many in Wisconsin. I hope you'll gather with us next time. Around the farm table. I'm your host, Inga Witcher. Do you like some potatoes?
Funding for Around the Farm Table is provided in part by Wisconsin Farmers Union, a member-driven organization for family farmers, rural communities, and all people. Wisconsin Farmers Union, united to grow family agriculture. Information at wisconsinfarmersunion.com with additional support from these community members and friends of Wisconsin Public Television.